Well, we made our way over to Land Rover, and I can honestly say this is the first time I've ever been in one, be uh, yet another vehicle that I haven't been in before, because in general I'm kind of appalled at the idea. Well, we're actually in the LR3, which is the recently introduced uh, replacement for the Discovery, which I actually do like over the Discovery. The Discovery was dangerous looking to me, but... Yeah, it's I'm just amazed at all how much electronic doodads they have shoved in this box. As I was walking around the back of it to get in, we decided to sit in the back seat since it's such a lumbering beast, by the way. Yeah, this and is quite roomy, actually, believe it or yeah, not. Yeah, actually, it really is. But as I walked around, I noticed a headphone jack in the very back, like, cargo area. And it made me curious, and I look, there's individual headphone jacks in each side of the back seat, oh, yeah. and on each side of the very back. I don't even know, oh, there is a fold-out third row seat in here, at least, but it's, I guess I have to question why. There's also three sunroofs, a neat novel idea, I don't know if all of them open, no, it doesn't look like the back to open, but again, it's just trying to shove as much doodads in here to make it seem luxurious, but you're just making an already gigantic SUV heavier. Yeah, and it makes you also wonder, like, wiring down the road. I mean, they, they have all the wiring for the door, which has all these controls, two speakers, obviously power locks, and all the other components into one very, very small wiring harness, probably about an inch wide in diameter. Granted, this could be fiber optics, but you still have to get power to the four corners, the four doors. But yeah, I mean, there is a lot of you know, a lot of doodads and electronic gimmetry and stuff like that. And Mike's playing with the red button, yellow button. Oh, hey, look. It looks there is a cooler in the center console. I mean, it is nice and icy cold in there. Oh, seriously? Yes. It is. Feel it. It's frosty. Oh, yeah. You could keep popsicles in there. We probably I, it's not just a fridge. It's a freezer, I think. We probably put pop in there and come back and get it tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, there's all sorts of seemingly like that, seemingly pointless doodads that you really do not need need in a vehicle, but I guess if, you know, you're taking the family out, you know, 30 minutes somewhere, you don't want your kids screaming because you're a pansy and not a parent, I'm sorry, but I just don't see the point of all of this. Well, but it know. is very nice. All of it is very nice. It's probably nicer than my living room, so you can chalk it up to envy speaking. Well, let's probably uh, get out of here because we got a line showing up around the LR3, so we'll see you somewhere else. We don't know where yet. Well, we had a nice break for lunch, and um, I thought it'd be a nice irony that uh, since the last car we were in was so hulking huge that we'd stick ourselves in new Mini, especially since Catherine is now able to join us. I am here, and I am stuck in the back. I had to move Mike's seat forward a little bit to have any leg room at all, but it's really not bad. I think we're going to be able to live through this. I don't know if we could drive, you know, from Detroit to Minneapolis in this configuration, but... Um, no. <laughs> you know, I'm willing to sacrifice your leg room for a little bit of spirited fun on a trip, you know? Oh, that could be, yes. <laughs> if I was in your seat, I would agree. See? You know, it's not so bad. I know. just noticed now that we have a new, um, key fob ignition with a start-stop button. That wasn't previously available on the minis. No, I don't believe so. I think that's new kind of taking advantage of some of the same technology BMW has, so... Right. And Volkswagen, for that matter. True. And I was just crawling all over the John C. Cooper works package, and um, I like the new evolution. I haven't spent too much time in them, but there's, they kept true to the original, and, you know, they kept the cool gimmicky little switches and stuff but that I think are, like, retro cool, not you know, a bad sort of gimmicky, but they're can just different. Lock the car. Oh, sweet. We can lock the car, but we cannot roll the, up the window. So your background music is currently being provided by the the mini DJ. So give them a round of applause. If it's you not a like. small DJ. It's just we're at mini and there's DJ, so mini DJ. Yeah. <laughs> I, do like, I do like the carbon fiber accents you're starting to put on more of the cars now, as opposed to just the John Cooper Works GP kit. But I think these yeah. might be aftermarket. Not aftermarket, but this I, dash is like full checkered flag look is kind of interesting. I don't I, know if I care for that. Oh, I really like that. Really? I think that's really attractive. It, it could be the fact that it's offset by the yellow, uh, I guess you would call it knee bar in the center here. I, I'm not so 
much digging that, but I'm not the biggest fan of yellow cars. I could do without yellow, too, but it's not such a liability on the Mini. That's true. I, smaller cars like the Mini and the Beetle are the only two that I can really think of off the top of my head. I'm sorry. The 911 also pulls it off beautifully. Absolutely. Well, there's reason for that. So does yeah. the roof yellow bird, but that's another story. Right. Well, let's head over to uh, BW for a little bit and take a look at the CC. Sounds good to uh, me. Sounds like a good idea. Get me out of here. Hello, we're sitting in the new Passat CC from Volkswagen. Quite a bit bigger than the Mini we were just in. How's the oh, back yeah. seat, Mike? The back seat is excellent. I have, I mean, plenty of leg and knee room. And uh, though I do have to comment, the first thing I noticed when I got in the back seat was me wanging my head off the roof because of the uh, coupish rear design. I wasn't thinking and just hopped in. I saw a spacious back seat. However, there is good headroom when I sit back. I'm okay. But um, getting in and out, I believe, is where the problems lie. You have to lean a little bit more far forward than you would anticipate. But other than that, it's really nice back here. Oh, we, oh, we love the little silicone inserts in the cup holders and stuff, the throwback to the V5. And actually, they're easier to pull out, too, easier than ours. They don't have, yeah. little, they have little tabs. Um, brushed aluminum dash, really nice. Um, I really like this two-tone, too. I the two-tone is stunning, and it's echoed in the interior on the roof where we have a huge glass sunroof. One thing I did notice on the uh, CC, though, is the front profile of the hood. It has the multi-segment, uh, I guess, arches, or uh, cutouts on the side. It reminds me very much of the Saab hood. Very mm -hmm. much so. Oh, yeah, I can see that. And the uh, rear yes, trunk yes. lid, the, uh, I have an issue with the rear trunk lid. The design of the hinges are actually throwbacks to the 80s, like the Mark II Jettas. Oh, in no, order where they for actually to, come in. With the big post. Well, they, they're on the sides of the cargo area, and there's a, it's a walled cargo area that they go into. But if those were not there, I would assume that they could have you a could, wider yeah, a wider can, footprint in the mm -hmm, trunk. Right. Mm -hmm. But those things um. aside, um, it's actually a really nice car. I actually really, really want to drive one. I'm going to have to start talking to uh, some of our friends at VW. I could see that. And uh, see if we can get one. To test. Um, yeah. I don't know. I doubt you guys noticed. There's actually a built in power inverter back here. You have a uh, 110 volt outlet in the back. Really? Fantastic. Yeah. 110? Yeah, the 110. Oh, wow. That is awesome. So, Fantastic. I mean, you could plug in your laptop back here and work on a road trip, you know, or. You know, it's. I like the bucket seats. They've got a nice console here. You can have cup holders, or you know, you could basically fit a whole Happy Meal in here if you wanted. But. And they're they're definitely the best bucket seats we've ever seen in a Passat. Yeah, by far. At least the U.S. side. They had Recaros in Europe, but we didn't get those. So stateside, I agree 100 percent. As a Passat, and actually, all three of us are Passat owners. How Absolutely. so strange! Absolutely. Yeah, I suppose we are, huh? Excellent. Well, one thing I like is the new creamy beige interior. I've not always been a fan of beige interiors, and this is just a very, very pale, creamy tan, and I love it. Yeah, it's two-tone, as Mike was mentioning. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's what does it for me. I usually can't stand light interiors, but I think because of how it's offset yeah. by this beautiful framing of black, even the, the opposing stitching is, you know, a nice touch. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just, I noticed it's just on the dark. There's no black stitching on the on the white side either. But yeah, it's got it's got good controls. I was mentioning in a, a I guess in a note session that the ergonomics in this car are very good. I mean I, I as an Audi VW driver I feel at home in this. Whereas the last I'm, oh she's yeah unfortunately I'm I don't have the luxury the of sitting in the front seat. But it is actually just looking at the layout from the back. It's all very familiar. It looks even though it's not driver centric like we were talking about in the Audi. It's still very accommodating, I oh, think, nice. to the driver. A hidden, oh, hidden dash. A hidden USB port. Yeah. Oh, Exceptional. wow. Exceptional. Well, Excellent. I think that's pretty good coverage on, on this car. I mean, so far we like the Passat CC. I'm actually very impressed with it, in all honesty. Yeah, as I am I'm too. surprised, I should say. And we should probably get going, because I think there's a crowd forming. Yes, they're watching us and taking pictures of us. Okay, we'll talk to you guys wherever we go next. See you soon.